In this video, I'm going to go over the request by Tesla Canada to allow them to charge by the kilowatt at their Tesla superchargers here in Canada. Uh, currently, it is on a per minute basis and there's four tiers due to that. There's the 0 to 60 kilowatt, 60 to 100 kilowatt the 100 to 180 kilowatt and the fourth tier being 180 to 250. Now they put this request in on May 3rd to the uh, Measurements Canada um, through a, a letter and Canada responded back quickly on May 9th and so let's go ahead we'll go through uh, the request that was on June 14th it was released out on engage.tesla.com and so we'll go and we'll take a look at it on my browser here and we'll see what they're asking for uh, we'll review that letter that they provided and the response from Canada but anyway for those that are unaware here in Canada measurements Canada regulates how energy and fuels are dispensed and so currently right now only electric companies are able to charge by the kilowatt so the only way that any EV charging network out there can charge currently is by the minute so again Tesla has four tiers Petrocan has a, a straight up 27 cent per minute electrify Canada it is uh, electrify Canada it's like 57 cents per minute but they're all by the minute and so Tesla is trying to put the pressure on Canada to change it by putting it by the kilowatt which is only fair for EV owners to pay for what you're actually getting uh, in consideration, uh, here's a thought for you guys. Uh, if you're going up to a gas pump and you're filling your car with gas, it says how much it is per liter, not how long you're pumping. So again, fuel could come out at a different speed or rate, yet you're just being billed by how much fuel you're putting in your tank. Imagine being billed by the same principle which is per minute and then you hold it wide open you get more fuel but it's the same price per minute compared to somebody that's just holding it halfway open and getting less fuel per minute so it's time for change we need to go and switch over to kilowatts per hour for charging they've been talking about this for uh, multiple years now I think it's on three or four years anyway let's go on to the website that Tesla has and take a look at some of those documentations okay so this is the website that they have it's engage.tesla.com I'll put the link for this article down in the description so that you all can take a look at it but what they're saying here is that they're asking uh, Tesla owners to go out and create a video or leave a comment on how this is affecting you and this has inspired me to create this video so here's some of the things they're saying so have you ever wondered why you pay for EV charging based on time rather than on energy here in Canada well it's because the federal agency measurements Canada which currently prohibits charging providers from billing customers for energy they consume. The agency must establish new metering rules for EV charging. Until then, customers must be billed using time. Imagine a customer paying, and this is what I said before, imagine a customer paying for gas based on how long they use the gas pump rather than the liters or gallons that you would fill, uh, use to fill the tank. So what can we do to fix this? Well, Measurements Canada is working towards that. I know even before COVID, so two years ago, they were asking uh, people to come and fill out a survey. So two, day, two years later, 
we're still in the same place. Nothing's really happened. They are saying they're working on it, but there's no uh, nothing in sight that says this is gonna happen anytime soon. So what do you need to know? Public EV charging operators in Canada currently bill EV drivers on a time basis, which is per minute or per hour, because Canada metering rules were not designed for EV charging in mind. Therefore, the existing rules are not suited for Measurement Canada to review and approve the metering devices that would embedded that are embedded in the charging equipment. So that that's again here in the fall of 2020, after hearing from EV drivers and enthusiasts like you from across the country, Measurements Canada launched a stakeholders consultant to develop metering rules to allow EV charging to be priced on the amount of energy received or kilowatts hours instead of per minute. And Tesla has been participating actively in this consulting uh, process along with EV equipment manufacturers and operators, as well as representatives from the EV Owners Association. So I know that it's a bit of a challenge. And so there's a couple of things here. This is the letter that uh, Tesla um, provided to uh, Measurements Canada to start this discussion uh, back on May 3rd of this year, 2022. And so let's open that up and take a look at it. So here's the letter that um, Tesla sent to the federal government and I've highlighted a couple things. So uh, let's look at the one piece here. Again, they submitted this on May 3rd, 2022. And they're requesting for temporary disposition under the Electrical and Gas Inspection Act or EGIA for Tesla supercharging DC fasting charging services. So they're writing on behalf of Tesla to formally request the time limited temporary disposition for the requirements under the Electrical and Gas Inspection Act through the temporary disposition position, provisions of section nine bracket two that would allow Tesla to provide public DC fast charging and user services to its customers build through the all-in price um, kilowatt hour basis. So build by the kilowatt hour instead of by the minutes. Um, Tesla provides end-to-end -end charging services to them on a kilowatt per basis. So they're asking for that. Currently, Measurements Canada requires Tesla or all EV charging uh, providers uh, on a to charge on a per minute basis, which is unfair to the customers. And Tesla acknowledges that the Measurements Canada is important is an important regulatory body responsible to ensure that customers are billed for electricity in a fair and accurate manner. And from this, that is why they're asking for it because they believe that by the kilowatt hour is a fair way to bill. And they do that in the United States. So that's what they're asking for. And we can go further down here and they're just giving some more explanation on what it actually about. But after the uh, brief description of DC fast charging in Canada, Tesla's statement is, Tesla does not believe that it would be in any charger's operating interest to improperly or inaccurately meter DC fast charging. So they're, they're billing it by the minute accurately. And when we get our information about the charge, we know exactly how much energy they've provided to us. It's not how much any energy that's inside the battery, but how much they've put into the battery or provided to add to the battery. There are losses. So we'll go down further. Another reason Tesla is requesting temporary disposition for supercharging at this time is because Measurements Canada consultation in the EV supply equipment meteorology rules suggests that it is unlikely meteorology rules 
for DC fast charging will be established in the near term. So what they're saying is they don't think that this is going to happen anytime soon. And they're asking for a temporary relief so they can actually bill uh, Tesla customers of the supercharging network at a accurate and fair rate. Now, by the minute, it's crazy. Um, you can look at Squamish as an example. Um, it's, uh, I think it's about a, a little over, I think it's a dollar five per minute up to a 150 kilowatt. But if you're getting 148 or you're getting 101, you're being billed the same per minute, even though over that term of the minute, you're getting less energy. So, and there's no way on the car to say, I only want to get this much because if that was an option, we could set our cars at 99 kilowatts and, and stay below the next threshold, but we're not able to do that. So maybe that's an option that Tesla possibly could do because we do that for uh, when you're plugging into a level two charger, you can set how many amps it actually allows you to put in. So you can, so they're asking for a temporary relief. This is what they've asked for. Um, we can go down there. They're basically saying that they have a lot of superchargers across Canada and throughout the world. They've blanked out some of the amount of energy that they're they're selling or delivered to customers and it doesn't say who's actually doing their request from tesla but uh elong thank you so much for making this uh, request and so let's go on to the response from measurements canada so measurements canada um, they responded back on may 9th and so that was like like six days later so they got it and they must have had this set up right away because they got this letter back out to them so they basically thanked them for the letter from may 3rd requesting a time limited temporary disposition to allow tesla canada to provide electrical dc fast charging to the end users billed through an all-in price or on a kilowatt hour basis for their dc fast charging so they thanked them for their request. Um, then they mentioned that they're currently working with utilities, equipment manufacturers, industry standard associations, any, and in any coordination with other jurisdictions to develop policies and technical standards that can be used to allow metering devices to meter the base of a charge for electricity dispensed in an electric vehicle. So they're saying that they're working on it. But they also said, that said, our work is in this area is progressing quickly as we have just launched a public consultation process outlining proposed approaches to addressing EV charging already deployed in the Canadian market. So that was done in 2020, the fall of 2020. So um, it ha nothing's happened. And so again, they're just thanking Tesla, but they're not going to do anything. So I'm asking that everybody go out there and go to the website. Again, I'll put the link down in the description and then put your comments down there. Let Canada know that we need to have this happen. It's only fair that we pay for what we're actually getting, not on the per minute thing. So government of Canada regulates cell phones and you know a ton of things but they're not doing EV charging correctly and I know that the electric companies you know this is the rules that are there are there to protect Canadians from someone trying to sell you electricity they're not allowed to so that's what it's trying to stop but Electric cars have been around for a while and that's what they need to do. So please go to that website, put your comments, uh, voice your opinion. Let's get this happening. Again, thanks for watching my video and hopefully we can get this resolved in the next one to two years. Thank you.